So what is it that you need to survive? What is it that you and I both need to survive? Guys, welcome to the channel and that's going to be the topic of this video. I've done a number of these over the years. They're not really all that different, but time goes by, you learn different things, you adapt, you change, you find yourself in different place in life, you find yourself going through different experiences, and these topics are worth revisiting. Right now, I'm man, I'm in a good place in life. I've been always I've been pretty fortunate my entire life, I guess. But I I've been thinking a few about a few things, especially since watching the, one of the last uh, one of the latest uh, Paul Harrell videos on bug out bags and watching him talk about what uh, he's he's going through in life, you know, if you're not familiar with his channel, Paul Harrell is uh, a legendary uh, YouTuber in our in our beloved community. He's not going through a, a great moment right now. His health is deteriorating uh, quite a bit, and he did a video talking about how right a big bug out bag really does not make a whole lot of sense for him. Now, this is something I've been thinking about myself for for many years uh, i researched all of this a lot for one of my books uh, bugging out and relocating which i also have the links for there below in the description uh, of the video uh, but that book was uh, something I, I researched a lot for um, learning about things that ha i haven't gone through myself uh, my first book is surviving the economic collapse based on on my own experience going through that in Argentina. Now that was the starting point for me. If I just had stuck with that and done nothing else, you know, that's not growing as a person. That's not growing as a as a professional in our community. Um, and, and I agree with with him in terms of you want something small. You want something compact that you can move around. Now, I can carry my, my youngest kid. I can pick up my oldest kid as well, right? I'm not going to be walking miles. I'm my, my youngest son. Yeah, I can do that, still do that. Um, but what if I'm injured? What if I've been shot? What if I'm hurt? What if I have a broken arm or a broken leg and I can barely move myself? Am I going to carry my kid and a big giant bug out bag, my body armor, rifles, all of my guns? I mean, how many of you can carry? I was talking with I was talking with a good friend the other day. He has hundreds of guns. Hundreds of guns. He hasn't got an idea of how many guns he has. Are you going to carry all of that? You don't even have the time to throw that in the back of your truck. And it probably does not even fit. So when is gear just too much? When is it that you're just collecting a pile of stuff? Well, for bugging out and relocating, I, I basically came to the conclusion, which is pretty logical, which is, you need options. You need something like this. You need something super minimalistic. A little bag with your VIPs, right? Your very important papers. Some of your documents, some of the uh, your, your passports, a good amount of cash. Um, hopefully, quite a bit of gold as well. If you're fortunate to have a lot of that. Silver, not so much. Silver gets very bulky. So that's one of the things you'll learn over the years. Especially if you ever had to leave in a bit of a hurry or not. But just leave and leave some of your, maybe not some, but leave basically all of the stuff you have. Like I had to do when, when I did that. Um, yeah, there's, there's no way of carrying all of that stuff. You just have to leave it behind. And that's when you realize that it does not matter. All of this crap does not matter matter. Even in our survival prepper world where all we do is talk about gear and stuff and water purification and having tons of food and ammo for the end of the world and having uh, you know ways of stocking up and producing and doing it's it's all just stuff. It's all just stuff. What really matters Right? What is what is that really matters? Is it knowledge? Is it the stuff that I that I write about? The stuff that I share here in the channel? Yeah, yeah, sure. That that is super important. I mean, hell, that, that's what I do, right? I write about these things. I do these videos. But is it really that what matters? No. You know what matters the most is your attitude in life in general. <laughs> you will be just fine. If you have the right attitude. Hell, 
a lot of people that have the wrong attitude are still alive. They're still surviving. And it's a, it's a wonder how millions of people that in spite of their best efforts to not survive each damn day, they're still around. <laughs> you know this perfectly well, don't you? So someone that has just a little bit of dedication to staying alive should not have that much of a trouble, of a problem. And, and having said that, unfortunately, some of the, some of the best people um, just don't make it because of health reasons, because maybe they didn't take so, so much good care of themselves, uh, food habits, smoking, drinking, whatever, right? poor genes, bad luck, who the hell knows. But yeah, that's also true. Unfortunately, that, that is also true. But I can tell you that having the right mindset, having the right attitude, not in terms of, of technical stuff, right? Not in terms of, yes, survival knowledge, you know, things that uh, get you through. No, even just having a positive attitude in life in general You'll probably be just fine. You'll figure most of this out. And yes, yeah, sure, there's things, there's certain emergencies, there's certain events, there's certain things that happen that if you don't have the, the, the right, not only just attitude, but the knowledge to, to uh, pick these things up and see when they're going down, you may find yourself in a very tough position. And that is where, yes, the stuff we talk about, the stuff I read about does come into play. Now, I remember talking with my, my friend back in the years of, of the forums, back in the, glory, the golden days of the internet prepper and survival forums where we would spend hours and hours talking about stuff and having interest. Instead of having just these, you know, people, uh, people are less tolerant these days in, in, in these aspects. But back in the day, we used to have some great discussions about what it is that you need as a basic core minimum. And my, my friend who, I, I hope he's watching this, my, my good friend, uh, Marine, Marine Recon, right? He, he was in the, in the military. Um, he said that all you need to survive is a pistol, bottle of water, and a gold coin and he actually carried a gold coin in his pocket all day he had a yeah actually meeting him he he had the thing in his pocket an ounce of gold it wasn't nearly as much money as it is now but you know inflation <laughs> or yeah or fiat currency or being enslaved by <laughs> those running the world whatever you want to call it but yeah uh that was the basic minimum no but you need, uh, my list is gun, passport, cash, and bottle of water. Or I can just go without the bottle of water. Well, you know, that, that was the kind of thing. And again, these are things I've talked about before, this, this minimal thing of what is it that you should have. You know what, man? H actually having gone through this sort of thing where I had to leave most of the things I had behind, the way I went about that when it was my turn, it was <laughs> it was these and then the not physical thing of money in accounts, right? In different parts of the world. That's what been what's been the the key, at least for for me and after so many years of being involved in this and learning from what's happened to different people, it's the same it's the same for a lot of people as well. Um, talking with um, you know people that have gone through bad times in 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 South Africa that had basically been forced to leave South Africa because of these things. Talking with Selco, which probably a lot of you are familiar with. Talking with Selco, one of our, our first conversations was, man, just don't be there, right? That's I mean it's it's as basic as it can get. You you avoid all of this by not being there. Look at what's happening in in Gaza. If you could not be in Gaza, and a lot of people are not there. A lot of people that had the opportunity to leave. I mean, not now, which is just insanity what's going on there, but people that left when they had the opportunity years and years ago, they just 
found their way, either through employment or something, some way of getting yourself out of that horrendous situation that's been going on for, again, it's not now, it's decades. Leaving Ukraine was years ago, and I did. I remember doing that video days before the invasion, the, not the initial ones, not the ones that were happening already when the world was pretending Russia was not invading a neighboring nation. No, I'm talking about when they went straight for Kiev and a few days before the attack happened, people were already leaving and people were leaving in mass. People were just getting their suitcases, throwing everything they could into those, into those little... Um, yeah, you know, boarding, you know, the ones you, you take on board with you, those little little tiny suitcases that you go for when going a weekend in some nice part of the world. Um, and, and you know what? I, they were they're carrying clothes. You know, they're, they carry clothes most mostly. It's going to be clothes that they had in there. It's going to be whatever cash they had at hand, which was probably not nearly as much as they wished they had. So giant ass lesson there. Whatever documents they had in terms of passport, whatever other passport they had, very few of them, but I have insisted on this over the years, have as many passports as you possibly can. You just never know. You have no idea. Not only that, not only don't you, not only you have no fucking idea what will happen to you wherever you are in this planet a year from now in the world we are today in this condition having gone through what we've gone over the years you have no damn clue what life will be for you a year from now no matter where you are but it's not just that this is the kind of thing you pass along to your kids this is the kind of thing that may save the life of your grandkids 10 years after you're no longer here among us because you just passed this thing along, which is by far the most powerful tool a person can have. Forget about everything else. Having the right piece of paper, having that uh, right to walk into uh, one more country or several as yet another citizen in this day and age, that is priceless, man. Well, it's not exact, exactly priceless. Depending on the passport you want to buy, it may be a few hundred thousand dollars. Maybe even cheaper than that. Maybe involving a little bit more time. But I've insisted on this. Look up your options. Probably there's a good chance for a lot of people if you had family from, uh, let's say, Ireland, Italy, Spain, a number of countries, um, or, or any other nation really. Just a second. And yes, some passports are better than others. Your Argentine passport is maybe not as great as your Swiss passport, right? You get it. But you know what? You know what? A lot of people went for Argentina. Look at so many Russians. So many Russians that escaped Russia because of the draft, because of what it's becoming, what it's turning into. There's a lot of Russians that the only place in which they thought they ended up in Argentina. And some of them are pretty damn happy. They're doing well for themselves. But you have that. if you have that paper, you don't even have to worry. You walk in there as yet another citizen. And if you have the right attitude, if you have the health, if you have the can-do mentality, you will probably do well eventually. You may struggle a little bit more or less depending on how much of a good start you had. And here is where friends, family, contacts, anything you have so as to help you during these trying times, that's going to be a huge asset, right? Going to a country where there is some family member, someone that opens a door and says, yeah, man, you, you can crash here. Yes. I mean, no, as long as you, as you need, you will be okay here. You know, don't worry. You know, just find your way, get, get, get a job and figure things out. But in the meantime, don't worry. You can crash here. You, maybe your family, you can stay here for as long as you need so as to get settled and get back on your feet. That is priceless. And that is not on the table. I do explain it in Street Survival Skills how that's maybe one of the most important things you can have. Uh, and how in this world in which we live, we are being told time and again that that does not matter. That family does not matter. That 
having friends is not important. People are more lonely today than ever before. We are living in fucking insane times, guys. And honestly, that's what worries me the most instead of all of this crap. Instead of all of the, you know, stockpiling and buying of gears and tools and yet another gun and yet another knife and yet another flashlight, which uh, I get it. I, I want to have it. I, I carry my stuff every day and it's been super helpful. I mean, I uh, I probably would not even be here if I had if I hadn't had one of these tools specifically at, at more than one time. So that is super important too. But we are now facing some existential threats that as crazy as it, as it sounds, most people are not aware of. We're facing existential threats because we don't even want to be alive as a species anymore. People are uh, made to believe that having children is, is cumbersome. It's a waste of time. It's bad. You're not having fun. Seth Rogen talked about how, why would he? <laughs> Why have kids? It doesn't seem fun. It is more fun to get high and talk with, with my wife. The, the guy is, is married, but both of them agree that they don't want to have kids. Um, you can't force people to have kids either. You can, though, uh, not try to socially engineer people into hating themselves, hating their own DNA, hating everything about themselves, hating everything about the society that gave them things that can only be dreamed of in many other parts of the world, that we could do. But that's not the, the choice. That's not what uh, those handling things have in mind. We are being told that, uh, especially this month, we're being told that being GTBQ plus question mark, whatever the hell, that is something to be proud of. That is, you have an entire month to celebrate the achievement of who you decide to go to bed with and have intercourse. Apparently, that's something to be celebrated. I was watching on TV yesterday, with last night actually, with my wife, a couple of these diverse and empowered and whatever. These people are not happy, man. They're not. They've gone through a lot of shit. I feel sorry for them. It was this uh, uh, two girls, two young Two young, healthy women in their early 20s, um, right? A, a couple. Both of them with more metal on their face. It was like, I don't know, any, any of you guys fishing ever found a fish with a hook? That is not some, that's not a pretty sight, is it? That's not what you, what you hope to find. But there are some of them swimming around with a hook in their mouth. Well, that was kind of like what these two girls looked like. Hooks, barbed wire around her neck. Uh, one of them had a tattoo in her forearm that was basically the face of a crying child uh, that looked disturbingly a lot like herself. Um, these are people that are hurting. These are not people that are okay. These are not things to be celebrated. You should not celebrate trauma, anguish, mental suffering, uh, life expectancy that is reduced anywhere between 20 to 20, 15 to 20 percent less than people that are not of this proud, strong, diverse, beautiful, rich community. The amount of, of, of anguish, suffering that they obviously are going through is enormous. How the hell is that something that empowers you? How the hell is that something to look up to, to imitate? Why the fuck is it that you want your kids to be like that? Why the hell is it that Megan Fox has three kids that are like that? How is it that so many of, oh, they just happen to be, no. No, they don't. No, they don't just happen to be like that. You make people a certain way. I was made a certain way by all of my life experience, right? Growing up in the family I did, growing up in the part of the world that I did, living in the different places that I've lived. I've been very fortunate in my life, man. I, I am. <laughs> I'm the, the luckiest person. Uh, that, that I mean, that's the only way I can see myself. Right? H has it been luck? Yeah, sure. A lot of that. Has it been the way you were brought up, your upbringing? The, sure, a lot of that, for sure. Um, 
But I've been very lucky in life, and still am. I have a, a beautiful wife, wonderful uh, kids, and I, I worked for that. It was not always easy. Uh, sometimes you, you need to make choices on what's important for you or not. And I'm super happy with that. But you are formed by all of these experiences. If I had been the son of one of these uh, Hollywood people that dress you like a little girl and tell you that you are strong and empowered if you pretend to be a little girl instead of being a boy, which is what you are, how does that affect you? I, I have a five-year-old. I have a, uh, a, a little kid. I know how easy it is to influence a, a child. These people are not well. These people are encouraging the kind of thing that is becoming so predominant in society. And it's not accidental. These things are not happening by accident. The destruction of the family is not a coincidence. All of this, all of this anti-family shit the idea of a man not being a man, a woman not being a woman, a, a boy not being... No, it, it is all... There's no longer any good or bad or right or wrong. Everything is a blob of shit that is undefinable. No, that's not real. That's, that's not how things work. You know what's important. You know what a man is, what a woman is. You know the place you, you have in this world of ours. It is all intentional. It's not accidental. But the idea is to destroy your own perception of self, hate your own DNA, hate your own culture, hate your own family, destroy the foundation of society so as to rebuild it into something that fits their nefarious agendas. There was this guy I saw, uh, I read an article, it's not, not, not often, but there was this article I read, you know, like... You know, going online surfing the internet i came across an article of a chinese man a chinese man that was maybe late 50s very early 60s i will man i will go and say the guy was probably in his late 50s now this chinese man like so many chinese men all over the world there's a lot of those there's lots of chinese people but this chinese man had a big regret he missed his mother and he missed his mother because she had died. She did not die of natural causes. She died because of him. Uh, and he, this, the man was obviously very upset about it. His mother died because of him. In communist China, the same communist China that still exists, there is very little tolerance for your alphabet bullshit and your diversity and the rich and empowerment that you're told is so important right now by these same people, by these same groups that encourage the destruction of family, of perception of self, of women, of men. This was, this is the backbone of the, the socialist movement. And in China, it was encouraged for children to denounce their parents. Something that's happening right now in the United States. There's, there's parents that are being now incarcerated in what was once considered civilized countries because they use the wrong pronoun with their kids because their fucking ex-wife wants to screw with them. And yeah, little little Billy now identifies as, yeah, he, he's, he's dressing in pink and he wants to be a little girl just to screw you over, John, <laughs> right? That's the idea. And you end up in jail in the United States for this sort of shit. Now, in China, it was the same thing. You were encouraged to, to report to the authorities if anyone talked up against a communist country. And this Chinese man uh, was having dinner with his family and his mother talked against the Communist Party. The Chinese woman, brave Chinese woman, did not like the bullshit of the Communist Party and in the intimacy of her home, while having dinner, she spoke against, she dared speak against the Communist Party. And the little boy being indoctrinated like so many little boys are right now, the following day went to the local leader of the village of the Communist Party and denounced his own mother. My mom spoke against the party. And the leader gathered a couple of their accomplices. They went for 
the mother to her home, picked her up, took her to the end, you know, the outside of the village and shot her in the head. That's how the Communist Party deals with diversity and empowered women. There's not going to be any Hollywood movie made about this anonymous brave woman that dared say the truth about what communism is. But the man grew up to be an adult and still probably cries till this day, regretting having denounced his mother to the Communist Party. But this is the world in which we live now. We live in this fucking insanity. So my point is, instead of obsessing over all of this, instead of obsessing over how you start a fire with a polished Coca-Cola bottle, like you saw in some fucking reality TV, instead of going shooting yet one more new gun that you bought, go and look what your kids are doing. Because I've lost count of how many people in the survival preparedness community, some diehard survivalists that lost their entire families. Forget about all of this crap and look at what your kids are doing. Forget about all of this crap and have a, 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 nice, a, a nice date night with your wife. Spend time with those that you care. Work on those relationships. That is the most important thing you have in your life. I constantly remind myself of how lucky I am. But I bet a lot of you guys that are super lucky as well need to be reminded of this. Go hug your kids. While you're worrying about what caliber you need, your kid is on TikTok right now being brainwashed by the fucking Communist Party. I've talked with, with guys that, oh yeah, I don't talk with my daughter anymore. She went to college, she got indoctrinated, and, and she now believes I'm a, I'm a conservative Trump voter monster. It used to be that no one gave much of a damn fuck if you voted one way or another. I am not that old, and I remember a time in which in the United States, people from the same family had a good old laugh about one guy voting Democrat and the other one vo voting Republican. It's no longer like that. And I warned you in this same channel that it would get to this point. I've been doing this for over a decade, guys. The amount of subscribers that I have does not reflect that. But believe me, because I do remember the day that I said, you will go through this yourselves. This is happening all over the world. It's not just what I went through and what I saw. This is clearly something that is being implemented everywhere. What we saw in Argentina was just, um, you know, what, what is that? A test trial of how you bring people apart, blow everything down. Yeah, maybe that, but that's, that's how these mechanisms work. That's how social engineering works. When, when Obama became president, I told this man, <laughs> Obama, this guy, this is the start of what we saw. You will go through the same thing. Ah, you know, but you cannot waste time with people that are just in denial. And yet here we are. No one now will say that it hasn't happened, that you haven't been polarized in ways you, in, in the wildest of your dreams, you would not have thought that you would reach this point. And yet here you are, so many parents that don't even talk with their kids and have been brainwashed into hating themselves, hating their country, hating their culture, hating their own families. You are the Chinese guy that had his mother reported to the Communist Party. In, in, in that insane level is that we are. We are all going through this together. Having said all of that, guys, what is then, therefore, the minimal requirement that you should have in terms of being prepared? I, I will go for these, right? At least for me, it was not only these, but having the right passport, having the amount of money, having, yes. So these I will have. I will have information, important key information in the iron key. By the way, the price of the iron key, it is damn insane. I'll leave the link there below if you want to get a lab or if you are very wealthy and you want to buy yourself an iron key. I did not pay that price. But hey, that's what it costs now apparently. And I'll leave the links as well as everything, uh, as always, the links for my books and so on. Having a, a pack for charging your phone, I think that's something that I will want to have in there. But basically, this is minimal. This is going to be documents, passport, a good amount of cash, as much cash as you possibly have, and 
the gun as last resort. Again, I, I would not even be here if I haven't had the right tool at the right moment uh, to uh, get myself out of that situation. And a lot of it has to do with this thing. I've got a lot of training in, in using these things. And it's been it's proven to be extremely helpful, right? The basics and all of this stuff that I cover uh, in, in street survival skills and surviving the economic collapse, that has been life-saving without a doubt, more than once, right? It's been the case for people that were not as lucky. It's been the case for people that did not have the right tool. I actually know of people that are no longer here because in spite of having the same training I had, they did not have the tool with them when they need it and they're no longer here. They just didn't make it. There's people that are stuck in parts of the world because they didn't have the paper. There's people that because of not having the knowledge, the information, they're just, you know, they just got a, a bad hand. But with a minimal amount of, of, of tools, with quite a bit of knowledge, and most important, with the right mindset to make it through whatever life, life throws your way, you will probably be just fine, man. So take a huge, you know, long breath. Yeah, relax. <sighs> breathe. You're fine. You're okay. Work on the things you know you need to work. And your health, your mental health, your family, your loved ones, those things are far more important than any of this. And while you're at it, look at your options, see where you can work and improve, and that's going to be all, guys. Have an awesome life. Take care.